right, this is third grade, module five, lesson 23, and we are continuing having our students generate simple equivalent fractions by using that number line. There is that standard algorithm that eventually students are going to get really, really good at. But at this point, they're just using a number line to make that connection. For example, uh, let's say we've got this number line, and oh, let's cut it into fifths. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. There's my fifths, and oh, let's call this, let's identify this fraction right here. So what, what fraction is that? Well, if this is zero fifths, and this is five fifths, that makes this guy three fifths. Now suppose I wanted to cut each fifth into two pieces. So now how many intervals do I have? Now what kind of fractions are we dealing with? Well, starting here at zero, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So these are now tenths. So if we wanted to, we could label this zero tenths, and of course we could label this ten tenths. So what would this fraction be? Well, here's 10 tenths, so 9 tenths, 8 tenths, 7 tenths, 6 tenths. So here is the fraction 6 tenths. If we wanted to check it out the other way, start at 0 tenths, 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths. All right, so we can see that 3 fifths is equivalent to six tenths. And teachers, parents, at this point, what we want students to do is we want them to be able to see that while well, those two fractions are indeed equivalent because they they reside in the same place on the number line. They live in the same place on that number line. We also want students to be able to see the, the relationship that, oh, three times two is six, five times two is ten. Uh, that when we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same thing, we get another fraction that is equivalent, all right? And this is where we're getting to. But at this point, we're just doing it from a real number sense point of view where students are using their number line. So here, it says write two different fraction names for the dot that's on the number line. So the first thing we have to do is identify what fraction is this. So starting at 0, 1, 2, 3. So there, from the space from 0 to 1 is broken up into three pieces. So that's thirds. So 0 thirds, and of course 1 would be 3 thirds. So that would make this dot 2 thirds. So now we need to create a new fraction name for that dot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut each of these thirds in half. And so that makes six pieces. Starting here at zero, we get one, two, three, four, five, six. So the space from zero to one is cut into sixths. So that makes this guy zero sixths, and it makes this guy six sixths. So what does our two-thirds become? Well, starting here, go backwards, one, that's five-sixths. Backwards, another one, that's four-sixths. So what we've done is we've identified two-thirds and four-sixths. Now, the directions don't say it, but it would be nice if the students see that relationship, that two times two is four, three times two is six. All right, let's do this next one. So we're going to identify that there are four intervals from 0 to 1. So that makes this 0 fourths, that makes this 4 fourths, and that means this guy is 1 fourth. And then, if I want to make a new fraction, oh, let's cut each of those in half. So instead of having four intervals, we're now going to have eight intervals. So this becomes 0 eighths, this becomes 8 eighths, and that means our dot here is 2 eighths. So our two fractions for that dot, 1 fourth and 2 eighths, 
And again, I want students to see that our relationship is a multiply by 2 each time. So 1 times 2 is 2, 4 times 2 is 8. More of the same. The only tricky thing is, this time, our interval starts at 1 and goes to 2. All right, so that's the tricky thing. Same thing down here. It starts at 1, goes to 2. So first we're going to count the intervals. 1, 2, 3, 4. So this has been cut into fourths, which means this guy is 4 fourths, and this guy is going to be 8 fourths. And so we're going to count 4 fourths, 5 fourths, 6 fourths, 7 fourths, 8 fourths. So that dot is 7 fourths. And if I cut each interval in half, I now have eighths. Instead of having four intervals for this whole number, I now have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight intervals. So what is this dot going to be? Well, if this is eight fourths, oh, wait, wait. So I want to get in there. So this is eighths. So that makes this eight eighths. That makes this 16 eighths. There we go. So let's go backwards. So if this is 16 eighths, then 15 eighths, 14 eighths. So this dot has two fractions for it. We can use 7 fourths, or we can do 14 eighths. And of course, I want students to see the pattern. And in this case, oh, look at that, times by 2 times by 2. And again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're dealing with fifths. That makes this 5 fifths. Makes this 7 fifths. Eight, nine, ten. Makes this 10 fifths. Now if we cut each of those in half, we're now going to have tenths, which makes this guy 10 tenths makes this guy 20 tenths. And so to count, oh boy, I might have to zoom in. Let's zoom in a little bit here. So then here's 10 tenths. So 11 tenths, 12 tenths, 13 tenths, 14 tenths. So this dot becomes 14 tenths. So our two fractions are 7 fifths seven fifths and fourteen tenths and I want students to see the pattern that in this case it's times by two times by two so parents teachers so far pretty much everything has been times by two that's because of the problems the limitations the constraints of the problem uh, parents and teachers it'd be cool if you could come up with examples that could be something other than just times by two times by two uh, but I'll leave that up to you. And the last problem for this slide, I mean this video, Danielle and Mandy, they each ordered a large pizza for dinner. Danielle's was cut into sixths, Mandy's was cut into twelfths. Danielle ate two-sixths of her pizza. If Mandy wants to eat the same amount, how many pieces will she have to eat? So we're going to use a number line, because it says so right here. Draw a number line. So we're going to start with a number line. And because we're told sixths, we're going to start with six, um, going from 0 to 1. And we're going to begin by cutting it into sixths. So I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to cut each half into three pieces. So there's my sixths. And it says that Danielle ate two sixths. So there's zero sixths, here's six sixths, so here, right here, is two sixths, all right? Now Mandy, her pizza was cut into twelfths, so that means we're going to have to cut each of these intervals in half, because really what we're asking is two sixths is equal to how many twelfths? And so, once we've got
got our intervals in twelfths, because I, I cut in all these, the original sixths I cut in half to make twelve. And so now what we have here is we have zero twelfths here. We have twelve twelfths way over here. And so that makes two sixths. Let's see, one, two, three, four. That makes it four twelfths. And so we can see that this answer right here, and I'm going to get it over, is a four. It's four twelfths. Now, how do we know that that makes sense? Well, we can see that same old relationship, that six times two is twelve, two times two is four, and there's our answer. And that wraps up grade three, module five, lesson 23, we're still talking about equivalent fractions.